Oh yeah, boys, you guys must be so excited to be out of school. Now, finally, you have plenty of time to listen to every single one of my podcasts while you play outside and do yard work. Or we could just change the Wi-Fi password and play what we want. Hey, guys, guys, come on! I can't even send an email now! Do you live, eat, and sleep the hotel industry? Looking to brush up on your game? You've come to the right place. Welcome to No Vacancy, the hospitality industry's number one podcast with your host, Glenn Hausman. Hey everybody, welcome to the No Vacancy Podcast with me, your host, Glenn Hausman. I am super stoked and excited to have each and every one of you here with me every single week as we release this show. And I gotta tell you, it is just so much fun connecting with all of you and hearing the feedback that I'm getting and really seeing that we're creating a fun, interesting community here. And thanks for everybody who sends me your ideas and all of your emails and all that kind of stuff. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I do want to say that, uh, speaking of thank yous, I want to thank Duetto because this show is brought to you in part by Duetto, the revenue strategy technology platform thousands of hotels are using to make more money. Now, I've told you time and time again, you've got to connect with these guys if you like making more money. I found someone the other day. He doesn't like making more money. Didn't understand him at all turned him on to duetto now he likes making more money and you can find out more about them too we're checking out get revenue get revenue and if you go on our homepage, novacancynews.com and click on the duetto ad that's right there on the right side of the page you can uh, get access to the blueprint for taking business back from o TAs. Now, I love that. If you haven't listened to our show before and you're just connecting and want to get our newsletter, be sure to text the word HOTEL to 66866. That's the word HOTEL to 66866. That'll get you our Sunday night newsletter that comes at you 6, 7 p.m. every single Sunday night telling you all the great stuff that we're doing here, all these incredible interviews. I've been um, sending out a rebroadcast of uh, some of our top uh CEO, president type of interviews that if you sign up for that newsletter by texting HOTEL to 66866, you'll get uh, access to all these links or just find all of the great interviews that we do anytime on podcast feeds anywhere from Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, all that stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the first show of summer that we're doing here at the No Vacancy News Podcast and No Vacancy Podcast Home. And I'm, uh, I am so awesomely happy about where things are going now. If you uh, checked out our feed this week, you'll see the first two episodes of our 10-episode first season on a tech podcast that we launched, the Hotel Tech Podcast. I want to thank SHR for partnering with me on that one. It's really great. We talk about all of these interesting uh, topics every single week, but focus focused specifically on hotel technology. The most recent show, episode two, is all about integrations and how volatile those can be and all of the challenges that we have in regards to that. And the first one is all on the true cost of distribution, where we uh, evaluate whether or not booking direct is actually the right thing to do and how OTA business fits into that. So a lot of talk about technology, a lot of talk about OTAs, a lot of talk about the future of where we're headed in technology. So be sure to join us for each and every episode of those 10 shows that are going to be coming at you this week. And speaking of new shows, man, I am so super excited. We're getting really close now. I really close, I think, to launching a 20-episode design series with some of the top names in the hospitality business. I've been collecting interviews. I've been recording them. That one is going to be special, and we're getting super close to that. So I can't wait for that. And finally, I know you guys have been hearing the uh, the ad and stuff like that. Um, Anthony Melcuri from uh, uh, the hotel, uh, from the Travel Channel Hotel, Impossible Extreme Hotels, etc., etc., etc. We've partnered up on a new show. We're finally getting close, I think, to getting that launch. So thanks for your patience. I know I'm getting asked about it everywhere I go, it seems. And I just want to let you know it is coming soon. Turns out everything seems to take longer than I want or really even expected in life. But the good news is once we get all of these these things going, I think you're going to really enjoy them and really find that you're going to learn a lot from them. I got a lot more surprises that I'm working on right now for later in 2018 and hopefully entering 2019 as I'm starting to know 
how important these podcasts are to everyone within the hospitality community. Whether you're commuting to work in your car, working out of the gym, walking the family dog, I know that it's great that you're sitting back here and sharing the groove with me each and every week in all these different shows that we're doing here on the No Vacancy Network. So, all right. So, all of that housekeeping out of the way. It was a great week. I know everyone was down at High Tech this week, a, an event that I was not at. I personally couldn't make it. I'm hoping to uh, get some folks to do a, a wrap up with me, either on the uh, the tech show or uh, here on this show, or just a bonus show. You never know. With the No Vacancy podcast, stuff is popping up all the time. Things and opportunities happening all the time, and we want to make sure that you get the best news that's out there and have fun easily digestible sort of way. So we got all of that going on, but um, more important, uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to take you to a, a very important interview. You know that um, the hotel industry in the last year seems to have really been looking to fight um, and combat uh, human trafficking, right? We don't want to have anything to do with it anymore in our hospitality business. And since um, last October, I've been trying to focus on it too and do my part to help out wherever we can. That's why I had on last fall uh, Ronnie Hung. She was a, uh, a, human traffic t- a human trafficking victim who was sold into slavery from India when she was just a young girl. She has an incredible story that she shares with me on stage at an event that I hosted for the Washington Hospitality Association back in October. Go check out NoVacancyNews.com or anywhere you find podcasts. Look in the feed for that interview from last October. And then back in uh, March, I had the opportunity to speak with um, Michael Mick McEwen. He's from the Department of Homeland Security, and he's the executive director of campaigns and the Homeland Security Advisory Council. I did a great, great interview with him on how to notice all of the signs of human trafficking that are happening under your nose. Now, remember, this is the sort of thing that can happen anywhere at any time. No hotel is immune from it, even Uber luxury hotels. It's shocking to me by how these things can happen. And if you listen to this interview with Mick McEwen, you'll really understand what I just said now and then how you could be more observant, how you could do your part to help out our fellow man. And it is so important. I say man, I mean humankind. I don't mean men. I mean men and women, anyone who's in danger, including children. So it's really important that you listen to those two interviews. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to take you to uh, an interview with AHOA Chairman Hitesh Patel. Um, HP is a great guy. It's been fun getting to know him over the years, and I had him on the microphone now that I recorded a couple of weeks ago at the NYU Hospitality Interview uh, Investment Conference. Short interview, but it focuses on what AHOA is doing to do their part, and they've created a training program anyone can tap into regardless of whether or not you're an AHOA member or not. The issue is just that important and every one of you out of there needs to be aware on how to do it. So we understood, we created um, an understanding of what happens to the individual and humanized it with the Ronnie Hong interview. We shared ways that you can spot these things and really brought the, um, the depth and difficulty of dealing with this situation, the interview that we did with um, Michael McMcEwen, and now what you can do about it and how you could enact a strong program within your hotels or your hotel company through uh, this program that AHOA is doing along with Department of Homeland Security and a bunch of other folks. But I'm not going to tell you that whole interview right now and what's in it because you are going to listen. We're going to take you away to that interview right now. Hey everybody, welcome to No Vacancy Podcast. So uh, today is kind of an, uh, an important show. We've had a couple of episodes on human trafficking in, in the past. I spoke with uh, Ronnie Hong, a victim of human trafficking and what she's doing to try to transform um, people's attitudes towards it. And I also did another show with uh, Mick McCune, who works at the Department of Homeland Security to try to bring awareness to this. And today I'm going to be speaking with Hitesh Patel, the current chairman of AHOA, all about what they're doing to make sure that this horrible thing is stopped. Hitesh, welcome aboard. Thank you, Glenn. Yeah, so human trafficking, that's been one of our 
key things that we're focusing on this year. We started it last year, and this year I've taken an initiative as one of my initiatives as chairman of the association. So our whole goal at the end of the day is to make sure that we are training everybody, not just the whole members, but the industry on the signs of human trafficking and learn what it, what it actually is and then act on it if you do see signs of human trafficking and then share that with your employees, share that with your friends to make sure that they are also doing that training. Okay, so before we get into this, I do want to say this is the first time we're having a chance to talk on the microphone since you became uh, chairman a little bit <laughs> earlier this year. So congratulations Thank on you. that. All of these years of hard work, you finally uh, you finally made it to the uh, yeah. the chairman position. Thank you. Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, I've been on the whole board since 2010 and last four years as a leadership role as an officer and this year as a chairman. So it's, it's a great feeling. And to be the leader of the largest hotel association in the world, that's something to really you know be proud of. And I'm going to be uh, looking at you throughout the year to see how gray your beard gets with all of the other <laughs> hard work that you're going to be doing th this year. But, um, you know, back to the, uh, to, to the topic. I feel like all of a sudden the hotel industry has awoken to trying to figure out what this is all about. It's something that's obviously always been there but not discussed. What do you think has changed in the last year or two that now it's so visible and everyone's really cognizant of it? Yeah, I think it's just, it's a conscious thing. You know, if we can do the right thing to help any individual out, that's what we need to do. And to come together as an industry and what you see, you know, like a lot of the brands are making an initiative where they're mandating that their owners and GMs be trained. And we're trying to do the same thing where we want to make sure all our members are trained. You know, if we, our membership owns, you know, nearly one of every two hotels in America. And we know that a lot of the human trafficking happens in hotels. So if we can be a voice and to fight this epidemic, that's what we want to do. Right. So you, you've actually created a whole program to assist hoteliers in order to understand mm -hmm. what the signs are and how to uh, prevent it. So take us a little through, um, you know, what you're doing in order to enact this change to make people proactive instead of being reactive. Yeah. So we partnered up with Polaris. We partner with the Blue Campaign from Department of Homeland Security and also Best Association. So we want to make sure that we are providing the training and the training is actually through Polaris where we did a, a partnership with them to make sure that we are educating our members and at the same time it's just, it doesn't just go to our industry hotel industry, it's, it's across the board there are signs of human trafficking in restaurants you know, any place you might go so we want to make sure that we are educating the people and you know, we tell them, it, especially for hotel people, is you know, you have, you have a guest in your room that hasn't had service for three or four days, you know, we need to make sure that as an owner, as an operator, that you're going into the rooms, checking into the room, because last thing you want to know is that there could be five children in there or a couple of old ladies that are in there, you know, against their will that are being forced in this trafficking, slave trafficking, you know. So we want to make sure that we are showing the science, and that's what this training does. The training is a 30-minute training that it's really quick to do, but it goes through all the different signs of what to look for, just like if someone pays a lot of cash, you know, there's an issue going on there, or if there's a lot of traffic in and out of that room, or if you say an older gentleman with like younger ladies or something, you know, those are the signs. And before we, it seemed like we always took the, you know, we didn't want to approach this issue because of the sensitivity of it. But now you see us coming together as industry, everybody wants to tackle this because that's one way that we can give back. Yeah, and um, uh, one of the uh, the important things that everyone needs to understand is that if you're a member of AHOA, there is no fee for this program. So as far as I'm concerned, there's no excuse not to participate in this Correct. program. There's no fee for a uh, whole members and plus there's no fee for anyone. We are oh, launching for, this really for, for anyone for the whole industry. It doesn't matter if you're in a whole member or not. We just want to make sure that we are training every single owner and every operator to make sure they're looking for signs of human trafficking. So uh, listeners, if you're out there and you're, you're hearing what I'm saying right now, which you are because you're listening to what I'm saying right now, that means you care. So you need to give your team that you have at your property the tools in order to determine what is happening. It's not your fault that there's human trafficking happening Correct. at your hotel, but you are the solution to have it happen. So tell us a little bit more about how the training works in terms of being able to engage the entire staff at a property. So the training in a lot of states now, it's mandated where the owner or the operator mm -hmm. does take some some type of human trafficking awareness training. So we just kind of escalate in that process. But the signs, you know, you always want to make sure that if you do see signs of human trafficking at your hotel, call that 1-800 number that Polaris has, Best has, or call 911 because they're there to help you. And, you know, a lot of people where I'm traveling across the nation, they go, well, I don't want to be, if I call 911, if I don't want to be known as a nuisance property where, you know, I might get you know, hit with fees or whatever it might be. But if you don't take this training, then guess what? You might be affected by extra fees or even jail time or losing your 
business possibly. Right. So if you can prevent any of that from happening, that's a you know that's what you should do as a hotel owner and an operator. Right. Listen, when I spoke to uh, Mick McEwen over at the DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, he's like nine one one is not going to think negatively of you if you've made a mistake. Yes. It goes back to if you think you see something, you must say something because the risk if you don't is too great. Correct. Yeah, and that's the message that we're relaying to at all our events that we host across the nation is it's you're not going to be a nuisance property, but you're going to be a part of the problem. You can create the, a solution. And the main thing is even after the training is done, don't just stop with the training. Make sure that you make your employees do the training, your housekeepers, your line level employees, and also your friends and family. Make sure they know about the signs of human trafficking. Right, because they are the eyes and ears of your, your business. You're probably out making deals or you're in the back room <laughs> making sure the financials work. You're not necessarily observing. Yep. what the people that are involved on the front lines of your hotel operation are observing, especially that housekeeping team. Correct. And that's the main thing. Those line level employees, they're, they're the ones who interact with the guests. You know, as an owner, I don't do much interaction anymore. Even at some properties, the general manager, they're too busy with their day to day work that they have to do. So they're not going like back in the day where you used to go check rooms and stuff or, you know, go behind the housekeeper because we rely on the housekeeping staff now. So the housekeepers are the main source that we need to make sure that they know what's going on. And if you teach somebody one thing, they're going to make sure they remember. Because the way to, you know, it's it's kind of hits in your heart. You know, when you hear about all these stories of all these children and women that are abducted at a young age and being sold for, you know, sex slavery or working in, the, in like in those factories and stuff, that's something that we have to stop. And if we can do something, that's the best thing that you can do. And we've always been in the hospitality industry. We're known for being hospitable. So we have to make sure that we're taking care of every guest. Yeah. How is the um, how is the training delivered? Is it an internet, internet based thing? Yeah, it's all online. It's an internet based 30 minutes and you'll be done. You go through a couple of modules and you get your certification right there so you can display it at your hotel so that way when guests come in or people know that this hotel has been humanly tra trained for on the human trafficking awareness. It will probably also scare away um, oh, potential people that are coming in. So just going through the training and having that displayed might be enough to deter human trafficking. Yes, yes. and like I said earlier, a lot of states require it and a lot of cities require it so you'll be in compliance too with the, whatever the local codes are. I'm just going to guess that it's in multiple languages because there's a lot of Spanish spoken by employees yeah, at hotels. But there's one in English there's one in Spanish, and we're trying to see if we can do some more languages also. Oh, that would be uh, that would be great. How often should people um, engage in it? Because I have a feeling that it's not just a one and done kind of a thing. Maybe you need to refresh it every year if you're a yes. long-term employee. So it's always changing. It's uh, ever going change in the whole trafficking training. So there's always different ways that we see new signs every day compared to what we saw, historically saw last couple of years. So we got to make sure that we're on top of it. So just because you do your trading and you satisfy the local law authorities to make sure that you're compliant, but that doesn't mean that you still got to keep learning. Go to session or go to webinars, take the classes where they have a lot of information on human trafficking. Make sure you're part of it. Just because you're doing it at hotel level, see if you can volunteer your time with these associations that we're part of and, you know, actually help other individuals that need this help. Excellent. How can people uh, learn more about the program and connect with you folks in order to utilize the program in their hotel businesses? Yes. Yeah, so if you just go to ohoa.com, all the information will be there. It's on our landing page. So there's actually a couple of pages there on the signs of human trafficking, you know, what to look out for. And there's also the online the training itself. Excellent. I can't underscore how important this is. No matter what you think, this is more important than anything. You are, it, this is, you are literally saving lives. I cannot imagine what it would be like if anyone in my life was in that particular situation and have the, the, the pure torture of having to go through that. Don't let that happen to anyone else. You're all good people out there, and I know you want to do the right thing and empower your team to do the right thing. Hatesh, thanks for being here. Uh, thank you for having me. All right, thanks, guys, and go ahead. Do this program. It's free. Thanks for listening. So I hope each and every one of you took your time to uh, listen to that interview and really learn and will participate in this program with AHOA. It is just that important. I can't encourage you anymore. Um, please participate in that interview. Okay, so now before I wrap up and we go to a commercial break and then after that, a fun interview where I catch up with um, the CEO of My Place Hotels, Ryan Rivett, in the second one of our conversations. You know, I really love going back uh, 
to check in with CEOs every year or so and getting to see where they've changed, what's new in their lives, get to little, learn a little bit more about their personal lives um, here on the No Vacancy Podcast. It's such a fun forum to really be able to connect with people in a more of an intimate way, more of a one-on-one human kind of a way. Um, we, we get to go beyond those talking points where we get to go beyond, um, you know, just saying the stuff that uh, the brands want to get you know, get out there. We get to the real issues. We get to what people are really thinking. And that's why I love having the opportunity to speak to some of these CEOs um, over and over again. Um, Ryan Rivett's really smart guy. My Place Hotels is really starting to take off. It's, um, it's really capturing the excitement and spirit of a lot of folks in the business. And as an extended stay company, it's really uh, great what they are doing on the economy level. So I'm excited about that. And uh, next next week or two, we should be uh, rolling out a brand new advertiser, which I'm super excited about. And I can't wait to share who that's going to be and what we're going to be doing with them for the uh, the next year. So, okay. So I think I've given you enough today. We're going to go to the Ryan Rivet interview right after the commercial break. But before I go, just remember this. Whatever you do, take care of your shoes. We'll be right back. Have a question for your host, Glenn? Tweet him now at Traveling Glenn. No vacancy. The hospitality industry's number one podcast. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. I'm excited to let you know that on Monday, just in time for high tech, I'm launching a brand new 10-episode series, The Hotel Tech Podcast. I'm partnering with SHR, that's Scepter Hospitality Resources, and I've got myself an incredible co-host for this, Estella Hale, who's their chief product evangelist. We're going to talk everything hotel technology, everything that you need to know about understanding the incredible changes that are happening in our business. So check it out. Coming Monday, 10 episode first season, the Hotel Tech Podcast with me, Glenn Hausman and Estella Hale. Listen out for it. Back to the show. It's No Vacancy, the hospitality industry's number one podcast with your host, Glenn Hausman. Welcome back to the No Vacancy Podcast. Uh, so, you know, I recently had on the show uh, Ryan Rivet, the CEO of My Place Hotels, and I really felt uh, it was a great segment. I felt we really connected, and uh, I said, hey, let's have him back on because we got the video, we got the audio, we got all that good stuff, and uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Great. Enjoying myself. I'm glad that you're enjoying yourself. Well, we're going to put an end, end to that because, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we're going to put you under the, uh, under the lights here and, and make sure you're completely stressed out so that way I can get all the real news out of you, you know, because right. you CEO guys, are, you're tough to talk to because, you know, you have to be so guarded with what you say yeah, sometimes. Exactly. I have, I have a great luxury over a lot of the other CEOs. We're not public yet. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I like how you said as many disclaimers. I like how you said yet breaking news here hey, on the No Vacancy you know, Podcast. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> so while uh, we're here, we're coming at you uh, live on Facebook. And if you're listening to this in the podcast version, this happened several uh, weeks ago. So sorry about that, guys. But here at AHOA, you had an opportunity to speak this morning in front of the group. They were doing these short five-minute TED Talk style uh, chats. Yep. Um, curious as to what you were thinking about and what your presentation was all about on stage today. Um, I think, you know, having the opportunity to talk about leadership as I started, there's so many different things that you can dive into. And so for me, it was more about telling a bit of my story, telling a bit of about growing up in the hotel business. And then, and then talking about some characteristics that I'd learned from the leaders that came ahead of me, namely my grandfather in the business and, and, um, how I've incorporated them into my leadership style. Right. Now, uh, for, for those of you who did not hear our segment, check the archives of the No Vacancy Podcast. You can hear a full half an hour segment all about the story of My Place Hotels and, and what it's all about, including the, uh, the family history and your connection to the, uh, the hospitality industry. But give us a, uh, a quick 30 seconds on the, uh, the history of your family and the hotel business. Uh, my grandfather and a partner of his founded Super 8 Motels in 1974. Uh, we grew the chain from Aberdeen. South Dakota until 1993 when it became HFS and then Wyndham. Then and send so in and blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And uh, it, since then, we, we continue to be hotel developers, builders, owner operators. And in uh, 2011, we started with My Place and, and started selling franchises in 2014. Excellent. So, you know, being that you have such a, a history with the AHOA community, tell me a little bit about what your perspective is within this uh, organization and how you, uh, you enjoy mixing with all the folks here. Yeah, the last several years that we've been attending the AHOA conference and, and working with uh, AHOA members on different deals, I've, I've really enjoyed learning how much uh, culture and history plays into their business and their business dealings and relationships. And it's really so important to us being a family-oriented company. 
we seem to uh, seem to match up pretty well on there. This year, I've gotten the opportunity to learn a lot more about the the leadership aspect in AHOA and and been able to engage with uh, board members a bit more and and learn about. Uh, what their perspectives are, what they're looking to do, and how they're looking to advance AHOA. So we're excited to be starting a new brand, sort of on the cusp of AHOA really reaching a, a, a tremendous point of critical mass and wanting to move on with diversification. And so it's it's exciting to be engaged with some of the younger hoteliers and, and also uh, be able to lean on some of the stories from the older AHOA members that were involved in Super 8 and with our company years ago. Uh, that's pretty cool. Any chance you have any, um, like... Um progeny of the original uh, owners from the super eight days no I, I was pretty young back then i've, I've had a, a few people that i've talked to who who commented about remembering me seeing me in the office when i was younger but no uh no real memory from my standpoint i was too worried about where i was going to get candy from uh, yeah well that's a very big concern and unfortunately at 47 i'm still worried about where i'm going to get uh, candy from you know my wife just won't let me eat more than one piece a day it's yeah. uh, it's really tragic yeah it is it's you got to worry about that when you start to get uh in your late 30s and 40s to change a little bit. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'm actually not a I'm actually not a, a candy guy. I'm more of a savory guy. I'd prefer when going out to dinner, have an extra appetizer and just kind of pass on on the dessert. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind that. I don't mind the extra appetizer and a big steak. I had one last night. <sighs> Okay, now I'm, I'm jealous. You know what I had for dinner last night? I had some peanuts and beef jerky because I forgot to eat at the cocktail reception. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm very passionate about beef jerky. Yeah, I've done that a few times. <laughs> haven't, haven't we all? So, okay, so, um, you know, we're here. We're, we're at Ahoa. It's a, it's, it's a great community to be a, a, a part of. What's your strategy for making sure that uh, you've got the right street cred with Ahoa to be pulling them into your organization instead of these mega corporations that seem to be getting bigger and bigger every single year? Because right now you're uh, you're an outlier. Right, we are, and and um, I think for us it's consistency. We're mm -hmm. we're the same group of people with the same things to talk about, uh, just in greater numbers. Every year we come back here, and, and as we develop more relationships with the Hoa people, and so uh, for us it's it's really about going back to last year's conversation, or going going through and rehashing uh, some some opportunities that we've been introduced to with the Hoa community and uh, seeing where we can continue to expand on it. I, I know that there are a lot of them that are watching us closely as we grow and waiting to see that consistency and that substantiation. So for us, our biggest strategy is just being consistent and building relationships. So how do you do that? Is it just a matter of being there and participating? Because, you know, I've been in this business for 20 years. I've built relationships and I've kind of forgotten the art and magic of forging those new relationships, which is so critical to you before you can even have a conversation about the value of my place. I think uh, a willingness to to discuss things in detail or discuss things from their perspective. I've had, I've had a number of different people say, I like with you that it's more of a conversation with my place. I can have a conversation with you guys about what my intentions are and what might, might you be able to do for me as opposed to it being more of a one way street with a bigger brand that's, that's well established and doesn't necessarily have the flexibilities that we have. And so for us, we can get to, I believe a deeper level of conversation and a better relationship because we have the time and and we have the flexibility to talk a bit more creatively with them what's the uh, the mix of the uh the, the folks that are buying into the my place system are they first time hotel owners Do they already have several products and you know i'm curious as to how what part of the hospitality journey you appear on for your uh, for your franchise clients well, up until up until the last twelve months or so, I would say that we're about a fifty fifty mix in terms of the franchisees who would have tenure in the hospitality business and the and the ones that are just entering the business. And I'm really excited about getting the new people into the business. I think it's a lot of fun because they're more they're more willing to adapt to the the things that we have to teach and and the programs that we have to line out. And so, and you know, when that happens, you have a much greater ability to have success when you're not dealing with you know, past experiences that might be negative and so on. Um, but now in the last 12 months, the dynamic has really changed. We're seeing a lot more multiple hoteliers come into, come into the, uh, our franchise system. We're seeing a greater level of, of franchisees come in that come in not with a single hotel business plan, but multiple hotels in, in a very short period of time, you know, seven, 10 properties in the next three years. And wow. that's, that's great for us. And, and, our franchisees are capable of putting that together because of the size and scale of the platform and the size of the investment that it requires is relatively smaller than what they're looking at with the other brands. And so they're having a lot of ability to move quickly. 
um, and, and succeed at a multi-property business plan on the front end. So I'm not a hotelier yet, and I always dream about being a hotelier. I talk about that a lot here on the, the No Vacancy Podcast, about how one day I dream to be a hotel, and if anybody wants to give me some sliver equity out there, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll, <laughs> I'll take it. But um, when you are bringing people into the system for the first time that have never owned a hotel, I'm sure there's a lot more of an educational process of it, right? One of the things I'm saying about when I'm building my business here, the podcast and dealing with social media and the way things are changing, it's like, I don't know what I don't know, and I'm curious to find out. So how do you share what your knowledge base is with all these hoteliers that probably just and hasn't come into their range of thought about particular issues that they should be considering? Yeah, I think the, the nice thing is, is that everybody that gets involved is, a, is relatively business savvy. So the basic principle of hospitality is, is really fairly simple, renting rooms, treating people with great customer service and so on. But the, but the specifics and the really um, big key points to be able to educate people on is relative to distribution and marketing and how we get out there and access the, the guests that are in those marketplaces and how we get them in through the doors. And so with, the, with that, you know, <clears throat> we've incorporated uh, a number of different people in our organization that spend time both on the front end and throughout the process educating from from our training department to revenue management to marketing and sales support we have those mechanisms in place that we don't just try to unload everything at them on them at once but we really work with them throughout the process starting prior to the hotel opening and then and then beyond and and it's been really neat to watch these guys that get involved for the first time that that decide to go in head first and they build for themselves without a general contractor. They manage for themselves without hiring a manage- management company. And they're really li- relying on us every day to give them guidance. But as they develop and mature in it in a very short period of time, they come back and give feedback to us that helps us with developing the process further. So. I'd say the biggest success that we've had to this point is that everybody that we've brought into the business from from a new entry standpoint Mm -hmm. has been able to come back and, and give us feedback that ultimately allowed us to expand our training platforms and our support platforms. Yeah, one of the things that I think is uh, is helpful is that the extended stay business is a little bit different than the traditional transient hotel business. Uh, now, I'm just speaking as um, an outsider who doesn't know the intricacies and the nuances of running a business, but it seems to me if I was a first-time hotelier, it might make more sense to go in an extended stay direction, which is, I think, a little bit more manageable in terms of the number of full-time employees you need and the uh, frequency of guests coming in and out. Yeah, I think it's there's there's so many less turnovers in extended stay, and in in our chain, what we're seeing is about sixty uh, percent of our business is staying less than a week. So, and and that's pretty consistent around mm-hmm. a lot of extended stay, where the general consumer has ex- has accepted extended stay as being a great amenity regardless of the length of stay. But nonetheless, that other 40% creates a great opportunity to have less turnover volume and a more manageable platform to work off of. And I think for our new hoteliers that come into the business, um, it allows them to ease into it a little bit more. And so it works. It works good. So uh, how many properties do you have open as of today? So we have 37 properties open today. We've got five more that are going to open the next 30 days. There's another 12 behind that that are under construction at some phase. So... We've got a pretty good pipeline, and then and it continues to grow. I think by the end of the year this year, we'll be somewhere north of 50 properties open. Oh, my goodness. That's a huge change in a short period of time for you. How do you, as a CEO of a company, manage such rapid growth on a percentage basis? Um, it's a whole lot of stuff for you to, to take in and manage all at once. It is. and I think what has prepared us most for that is the guidance that we have from Ron and so many others that were involved in Super 8 and saw that rapid growth and that that sort of percentage growth year over year and can say, you're going to need this, you're going to need that, make sure you have somebody here to address this. And, and, and on top of that, you know, having been an operator of hotels for so long, you know, before we started my place, we had at any given time somewhere between 50 and 120 properties in our owned and managed right. portfolio. So to some degree, that's very similar you know, we can go up or down from year to year based on sales and acquisitions or new development happening. So we've seen a lot of that really, uh, uh, really dynamic shifting and know what to look for to some degree, but it's it's really uh, necessary to have great people. Yeah, it sure is. And I guess every uh, X percentage of hotels you need uh, that open, you need to have more staff on site at the home office. And right. when you're talking about, uh, you know, marketing and getting all those people in the doors, you need to have a good focus on that. What are, you, um, what are you most excited about right now when you wake up in the morning and have to hit the office? 
Uh, most excited about? Well, I, th- I think well, I could say what sucks most, but uh, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to create an Let's adversarial relationship here. Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> enough of it. We don't need to dwell on that. Um, I think I'm I'm most excited about how how much our pace has ramped up in the last six to eight months. I mean, we've just seen a tremendous volume of people who were on the fence jump off and say, "Okay, I'm ready to do this. Here's where I'm going." Yeah, it looks like you guys have enough mass now to where I'm comfortable with how you can support me and so on. So it, it's really exciting. It, it's the challenges of, of scaling up the corporate office and the challenges of dealing with the different personality dynamics that you deal with, with a lot of franchisees, um, is, is much less uh, overwhelming because of, you know, it's not just this gradual pace of growth. It's just man it's really taken off and so you just to some degree we're just holding on right you know? yes but at the same time you've got to continue to educate yourself with smart practices so how do you learn as a ceo just in the terms of being a better ceo not not like how to uh, get more franchises but just to make you better at what you do do you read do you read books do you f- find courses online how do you, what do you think about um and now, now I'm now I'm trying to get into your brain so yeah. I could be uh, better at my job and just take a shortcut. If I if I get real introspective about it and, yeah. and try to see what what makes the biggest difference for me, I think it's listening. Um, I find that as we grow and as we have more people on our executive team and and in the corporate offices, I get the most value out of listening in on a conversation or joining in just to just to hear the the conversations that are had or the or the topics of discussion that are creating challenges and. And then I have the time to go back and analyze it a little bit and just think about how would I handle this or how would I take what they just said and incorporate it into the greater business plan that sometimes they're too in the weeds to see and I can see the bigger picture. Right. Um, I, th- I think that's that's what helps the most. I'm, I'm not a big not a big reader, don't dive into books a lot. I, I, I skim things and... and uh, um, but watching and, and listening to people has been the biggest thing for me as far as growth. Yeah, and I think that that's really wise words. Just to, to listen and then be thoughtful and respond uh, a, a, appropriately. Uh, must be uh, must be exciting for you because you're a relatively new CEO. You've been in the position for less than a year. But to be fair, you've been pre- I think preparing your whole life for this position. Yeah, yeah. it was uh, it was an exciting opportunity to start the brand, and and I was in a good position to be part of it. And um, as we grow, you know, you change and, and shift the the different positions that we have in the company. So for me, going from COO where I started to CEO, I didn't really see a whole lot of change. But it's but it's exciting to know that um, I have the opportunity to bring people up underneath me to take those positions and and really take over where the company's going. Did you work in hotels growing up? I did. Yeah, I did. I I, um, I had several different jobs all over our company. We're a pretty diverse company, so we have we have construction and development and hotel operations and farming and aviation and a lot of different things in our company. Really? And so I've worked throughout all of them. I've worked the front desk. I've worked housekeeping. I've done maintenance to some degree. Um, but, you know, as, as I came out of, as I came out of college, I, I started right away in construction. And that, if I think about all the things that I'd like to be doing during the day, the c- construction is the one that gets me most excited. What is it about it that, that gets you going? I think it's, I think the element of being able to see, uh, it's the immediate gratification element. You know, when you, when you build something, you put something together, you have to overcome a challenge. Every bit of construction is overcoming a challenge, getting something organized. But then on the back end of it, you can stand back at the end of the day and actually see progress any time on a construction project. Yeah, it's kind of like the complete opposite. Uh, I live in the entire digital world. And, sure. you know, other than getting a X amount of likes, I don't know if I'm making progress. Uh, to right. me, it only becomes evident looking back six months months to a year but I love the idea of being able to uh, to build something oh today we did this we framed out these rooms and it, we're making progress and we're headed towards the finish line I think that, that's a big challenge for us I, if you want to talk about what's most frustrating yeah I do it's the it's the uh, you know developing a program within the brand so a loyalty program something we've been working on I'm pretty excited about that we've been working at it for quite a while and and each time we've gotten to a position where we thought, okay, it's time to roll it out, it's time to go forward with it, we found elements and we found holes in it and said, you know, if we're going to do this, we want to make sure it's the right timing and we're set up appropriately and, and we understand how we're going to be effective at this. 
And so we've pulled back several times. This year, I'm really confident that, that we're at a size, we're, we're servicing a number of people that um, is really relevant to having a loyalty program. But the most frustrating thing is having to uh, pull back. When you go forward a ways and you say, okay, it looks good, and then you sit down and shoot holes in it, and then you have to go backwards again. Right. And, and the technology component is the most challenging of that. Well, I would think because every single time you decide we're going to do this with technology or you feel comfortable with the technology, boom, everything kind of changes on you. So you've got to be in a particular mindset where there is no finish line when it right. comes to technology. Right. So how do you balance that and know – What's the right technology to invest in and what's the, what's the right moment to wait a little bit? I don't know that there's a good answer to, to what's the right technology to, to invest in because it is changing so rapidly. But I think that the way that I've overcome it, I often get feedback from, from my people that says, well, I think this looks good. Let's do a beta test. Let's try this out on five or six hotels. And, I, and I've been wholly against that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want you to get comfortable. I want you to be understanding enough to it to the point where you can say, I don't know if it's going to be perfect, but I'm sure that it'll work for the whole group. And if we're going to go forward with this, we're just going to do it. And right. Jump in. And, and obviously there's some challenges that come along with that uh, because you get midstream and a rollover process on some system or something. And next thing you know, they've made a new version change and now you're going back through the whole thing to figure it out. Oh. Well, that makes me glad that uh, I get to ask you the questions and don't have to, <laughs> to, to live that type of experience. <laughs> so um, overall, you know, you, you're feeling pretty good about things. I really feel in the last year or so, you've really gotten the attention of, of everybody. I, I remember walking by your booth uh, last year, not really knowing who you were mm -hmm. as, a, as a company and going, I've seen these guys in, in yeah. places and now they seem to be everywhere. It must be feel pretty good to be finally uh, breaking through and not have to have that initial conversation people come to you and know who you are right. at this point yeah it does we've we've had great support from from different media outlets in the industry we appreciate the opportunities to talk to you on this show but just like this so many others have embraced what we're doing as being something refreshing something a, a, a bit exciting because it's it's we're somewhat non-typical we're the outlier as you said so it's been exciting to not have to have those initial conversations and explain, you know, what my place yeah. is. Yeah, for sure. And hey, totally uh, gutsy that you're started that you've started a new brand in an era of mass consolidation. I love it. It turns me on to see the uh, the uh, the outsiders, the disruptors, trying to make things different and. Uh, no, put a system of checks and balances in yeah. with all these uh, these big guys out there. I think the consolidation in the industry provides a big opportunity for us. Right now, it provides an opportunity to where everybody is continuing to look much, much more the same. Mm -hmm. Everybody who looks different will be noticed better, and I think that's what we're seeing over the last year. And then in the future, uh, the bigger other companies get, the more flexibility we have to run, and, and the more opportunity people will see in us. So. I, I'm excited about it. Excellent. I think the only thing uh, left to do is, uh, hey, how can people find you? Give me a good uh, shameless plug, one that'll last for a while because um, this will be uh, put out in podcast form, and I want people to be able to find you way after this event that recording this is over. So we've got a big yellow and red My Place sign that stands about 15 feet in the air above our booth. So, so just look up and look for the, the lit My Place sign. We're at booth 661. And where can we find you uh, online if the people want to talk to you in a later date? MyPlaceHotels.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and LinkedIn. Excellent. I, I love it. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And, uh, you know, it was great to have Ryan Riven on the show. And I want to thank you guys for listening week after week. This was uh, really terrific. And uh, you know what? I may just give up this show. And I won't be back next week because I'm going to go open myself a uh, My Place Hotel. Thanks, guys. We'll be back next time. Thanks so much for listening to No Vacancy, the hospitality industry's number one podcast with your host, Glenn Hausman, online at Rouse.media, on Twitter at Traveling Glenn, and on Facebook.com slash Glenn.Hausman. We'll catch you next time.